Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. On behalf of the National Transit Institute, I welcome you and thank you for joining. The National Transit Institute develops, promotes, and delivers training and education programs for the public transit industry in the United States. Today's webinar is National Transit Database Annual Reduced Reporting in the Urban Module. We are very pleased to have as our presenters today, Matt Oliver and Dan Barnes. Matt Oliver joined the NTD team in 2008. He holds an MA and a BA from the University of Virginia and currently serves as the operations manager for the NTD validation team. Dan Barnes joined the NTD team in 2012. He's also, he's a graduate of Clarkson University and currently works as a senior validation analyst for the urban reporting module of the National Transit Database. During today's presentation, you can ask a question at any time by typing it in the Q&A box. If you do not see the box, you can enable it by clicking on the Q&A box on the Zoom controls, which are most likely at the bottom of your screen. Matt and Dan will be answering more generalized questions today. So if you have any agency specific questions, we're asking that you reach out to your agency directly. An updated presentation was emailed to you this morning. If you have not already printed that out, I will be pasting the link in the chat box in just a bit. And now I will turn the presentation over to Matt Oliver. Matt? Great, thank you, Slendra. Can, can you hear me okay? I hear you fine. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the National Transit Database webinar for Reduced Reporters. We wanna thank you very, very much for joining us today. The contents of this presentation do not have the force and effect of law that are, that are not meant to bind the public in any way. This presentation is intended only to provide clarity to the public regarding existing requirements under the law or agency policies. Grantees and subgrantees should refer to the FTA statutes and regulations for applicable national transit data database requirements. This slide identifies the contact information you should use when you're unable to contact your assigned analyst, or if you're having technical issues with the reporting system. The NTD reporting application or NTD help desk is manned by an NTD analyst Monday through Friday between the hours of 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. This help desk service should be used as a resource to help with questions regarding the following, how to report NTD data, questions or clarifications regarding NTD policy, or questions or clarifications uh, regarding reporting requirements. Please note, you should only use this help desk when you're unable to reach your analyst. One important change should be noted is the 1888 NTD help desk number has been retired. The non-technical non NTD program support help desk is available from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. And this help desk resource should be used as a resource to help with questions regarding requests across all FTA specific applications and systems. Reasons to contact this help desk include login issues, system errors or bugs, or technical related assistance due to performance issues in the system. My name is Matt Oliver, and I'm joined here by Daniel Barnes, who will also be presenting today. Our contact information is listed here if you have any questions about this presentation, or you can reach out to your assigned analyst directly. This slide identifies the FTA program contacts. Thomas Coleman is the NTD program manager for the Office of Budget and Policy, and Dr. Mr. Doni Smith is a chief analyst division for the Office of P Budget and Policy. Here is the agenda for this afternoon. We will review the basic policies of NTD reporting, including a reporting overview, as well as touching on some policy clarifications and new requirements for this year. We will then discuss how to get started in the NTD reporting system, how to kick off and complete your annual report, and how to submit the report through the system. And finally, we will briefly review the validation and revision process. First, we will, we will begin with an overview of the NTD and the reduced reporting module. Who reports to the NTD? Agencies that are recipients or beneficiaries of FTA 5307 Urbanized Area Formula Program Funds or, 50, or FTA 5311 Rural Area Formula Program Funds are required to report to the NTD. 
Any recipients of FTA Chapter 53 funds are required to report to the NTD if they operate public transit. These agencies are public transportation providers that may include direct transit providers, state departments of transportation and their subrecipients, as well as MPOs or metropolitan planning organizations. Transit agencies are welcome to report their public transit data to the NTD on a voluntary basis, even if they do not currently receive these funds. The data from these reports contributes to apportionments for the urbanized areas or UZAs. Within the urban module of the NTD, reduced reporters are transit agencies who operate 30 or fewer vehicles in their peak maximum service. They also do not operate on any fixed guideway, such as rail or fixed catenary systems. For those who report as a reduced reporter, these agencies do not report data related to passenger miles in their service. They also do not report monthly service statistics or monthly safety data. Agencies have four months after their fiscal year ends to complete their NTD reports. For example, if your fiscal year ends on June 30th, the deadline for submission is October 31st and the report must be closed out or finalized by March 15th of the following year. We have three primary groups of fiscal year reporting deadlines listed here in the table. Next, we will cover what to report. Agencies must report all public transportation services, whether they are operated by your agency directly or contracted out as purchased transportation. Public transit must be regular, continuing, shared ride, and open to the public or a segment of the public, such as seniors or persons with disabilities. You are required to report all assets, expenditures, and service data associated with these services. In your financial data, you should report the total annual costs of your service, regardless of whether it was federally or locally funded. And you should only report services for which your agency is responsible for covering the full cost. You must report data that is specific to each mode and type of service that you operate, such as bus, demand response, van pool, and so on. Please be sure to collect and report service and financial data by each individual mode. Additionally, you need to ensure that you report actual data rather than data that is based on calculations or estimates. Please report all direct as well as indirect expenses related to the service also regardless of the funding sources. This slide outlines the general flow of the NTD reporting process. All agencies begin with reporting training and, and familiarizing themselves with the NTD policy manual. Agencies then compile and collect their data once their fiscal year ends. Next, they enter it into the NTD system and submit their first report. Your agency's assigned analyst will then review the data and send it back with revisions or requested clarifications. Once the report is finalized, it is sent to FTA for approval. The data will then be used in the apportionment formula funding and the next cycle associated with this report year. The data is eventually published on the NCD website for general public use. There are some key reference documents available online to help you with your reporting. These include the Reduced Reporting Policy Manual, with this document explains the reporting requirements and what should be reported, the Uniform System of Accounts, this document contains the accounting structure required by uh, federal transit laws, the NTD Glossary provides definitions of terminology used within NTD, and the Transit Asset Management Guidebook, this document provides details for transit agencies and measuring and reporting TAM-related condition assessments. These can all be found on the link provided in the slide. Next, we will discuss the changes and clarifications for the 2022 report year. We'll start with taking a look at the most recent updates for the 2020 census. FTA is required to use the most recently released census areas in its apportionments. The US Census, US census Bureau anticipates the release of updated urbanized area data in December, 2022. You'll see a link here titled Census Release Schedule. This site outlines the schedule for release dates of uh, census related products. Please note that the federal funding allocation statistics or FFA 10 forms will be unavailable for data entry until the 2020 census is released. 
You will not see the FFA 10 forms in your report package, but you will complete the rest of the forms as normal. Once the Census Bureau releases the data, all agencies will receive a system task to verify whether you are affected by the Census 2020 urbanized or urban area updates. This task will, will require you to update the service provided to the areas as applicable and complete the FFA 10 forms based on the new 2020 census areas. There will be two census webinars that will cover how these new census data will affect your report and any steps your agency will need to complete. The dates of these webinars are October 18th for agencies who report to the rural mode and October 20th for, for agencies who report to the urban mode module. For those of you who use automated passenger counters to capture and report your unlinked passenger trip data, please note that report year 2022 is a mandatory year to recertify your APCs. Each mode and type of service that uses APCs must recertify for RY or report year 2022. The most current policy manual from report year 2021 has details about the APC benchmarking plan and what it requires. For any questions or concerns you have regarding the recertification process, please reach out to your assigned analyst. Report year 2022 also begins a new four-year transit asset management or TAM cycle. For the NTD, this is important for the asset inventory data collection within the asset module, which includes facility inventory, service vehicle inventory, and the revenue vehicle inventory. The TAM narrative reports should be current and 25% of facilities must have updated condition assessment values reported on a one to five scale. For example, if your agency has capital replacement responsibility for eight facilities, at least two of those facilities should have an updated condition assessment for report year 2022. It also means that group plan sponsors will be asked to confirm the group plan participants. State DOTs and other plan sponsors will be asked to confirm the list of TAM participants they have been reporting. The NTD program appreciates your commitment to providing information, and we want to congratulate the industry on the first four years of reporting to stay in line with the requirements, especially considering the challenges of the last two report years. This slide provides an overview of the service applicability and what is not eligible to be reported to the NTD. Emergency services carried out by transit operators in coordination with medical centers or emergency management agencies in response to uh, COVID-19 do not meet the FTA definition of public transportation. Non-passenger services that your agency provides under contracts, which do not involve the transportation of passengers, such as meal delivery programs, also do not meet the FTA definition of public transit. Next, we'll take a look at how to report seating and standing capacity. If you are adding vehicles during the year, you should report seating and standing capacity as you would have per normal operating standards. Please do not update the seating or standing capacity to reflect any temporary capacity changes made in response to the pandemic. Some agencies have reduced the number of available seats due to social distance requirements. We will now review how to report shared rides and limited shared ride services. FTA requires all public transportation modes to provide shared rides to be considered reportable to the NTD. Agencies may report public transportation services if ride sharing has been temporarily suspended during the emergency. Services must still meet other public transportation requirements. And in your agency should notify your analyst, your assigned analyst, regarding the details of any service suspension. What is double heading vehicles and how do you report the service? Double heading is when an agency operates extra vehicles and revenue service because social distancing requirements have reduced the capacities of individual vehicles. For reporting regularly scheduled double heading vehicles, you should report the miles and hours traveled by vehicles along the assigned route as revenue service in your agency's annual report. For reporting double heading vehicles dispatched daily, you should report the miles and hours those vehicles spend en route uh, in your agency's annual report. Some agencies may be using what we call floating vehicles. 
These are vehicles that are on standby at key service locations to provide immediate responses to the problems related to passenger capacity. You will report miles and hours if a floating vehicle is dispatched to provide immediate response to problems related to passenger capacity. Please do not report miles and hours data if a floater vehicle is not dispatched. This is because the vehicle did not provide revenue service. Now we'll take a look at some changes to the NTD reporting system for this year. For report year 2022, there are at least two planned design improvements that affect annual reporting. The first change is an auto calculation feature that will be applied to the A30 form that auto calculates the average lifetime miles per fleet. Since this value can be calculated using total miles on active vehicles and the average lifetime mile value from the prior year, FTA is releasing a function to auto calculate this value on the A30 form. FTA recognizes that this is, an, this is an imperfect solution as it relies on the previous year's averages to make this computation. FTA will allow agencies to make corrections or override the calculated value if necessary. This functionality will be released later this calendar year, and we're hoping in time for the reporting deadline in October. The second change is an added feature on the A35 and A15 forms, which eliminates the need to perpetually save forms that contain no data with each annual iteration of the report. This only applies if the agency has no reporting responsibility for these types of assets in its inventory. More information on those requirements can be found in the most recent NCD reporting manual. We'll now take a look at the funding sources that were added to the RR20 form during report year 2020. These funding sources include the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, or CARES, the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act, or CRISA, and the American Rescue Plan, ARP. These funds should not be reported as extraordinary and special items, but reported by their source in the RR20 form. There is a specific line item for each of the mentioned funds, that is, and that is where they should be reported. Now, let's take a look at the agency's addresses and the unique entity IDs or UEID. Please note that the address on your P10 form represents your agency's physical address and it may not agree with the mailing address at the headquarters or your headquarters. In April, 22, in April 2022, there was a federal mandate to move away from using the Dunn and Bradstreet number or Dunn's number to uniquely identify organizations. The unique entity ID is now used to identify a specific commercial, nonprofit, or government entity. While not every NTD ID and unique ID will be one-to-one, -one, it is still a very important data point because it provides FTA with, with information about your organization. The NTD queries information from SAM.gov using the unique ID. This helps keep the physical address of your agency updated on the identification form or P10 form. Please, please make sure this field is current and accurate. We will now cover the NTD reporting system. This is the NTD homepage for those of you who are not familiar. It can be found at transit.dot.gov slash NTD. There are two links on this page that will allow you to access reporting system or the reporting system, one on the left-hand side and one on the middle right side of the page. Once, once you log in, you will land on the home screen and you'll be able to set a default system by clicking on the star. Announcements from the NTD will also be displayed here. From the home screen, you can access or navigate to your agency's annual report and your agency's profile by clicking on the home screen at the top left section of the page. The agency profile section is a frequently accessed part of the NTD system. This houses data that typically doesn't change from year to year, such as your basic information, the modes you operate, the users, and you can even find historical reports and the previous year's report to help you with reporting. You can access the profile by clicking on the home tab at the top of the page and then selecting profile. Next, you will see a link to your agency's NTD ID number, which is a link that will take you to your profile. 
When you click on the link, you will then land on the profile summary page. This page contains your analyst name, phone number, email address, as well as your agency's basic information. At the top of the profile section, you'll see several different tabs. Two frequently used tabs are the e-file tab and the form library tab. The e-file library contains historical requests like extension requests or agency fiscal year updates, and you can even locate closeout letters from previous report years. The form library contains your agency's reports from previous years. If you need to access the 2021 report for reference while completing the 2022 report, this, is, this can be done from the form library. Another tab you'll find in the profile is the Related Actions tab. This tab allows you to edit your agency's profile information, like your basic information, modes, or your users. There may be times during one report year or another that you need to edit your modes. To do this, you will select the Related Actions tab from the profile and select View and Manage Reporter Modes, and that is the P20 form. If you'd like to add a new mode to your agency profile, select Add Mode at the bottom of the screen. Please note, you will not need to add the same mode year over year as this data will be retained in the system. When adding a new mode, you will be required to select or enter the following information. You will first select the mode from a drop-down menu, such as bus, demand response, van pool, et cetera. Next, you will select whether the service is directly operated by your agency or contracted out as purchase transportation. Then you'll enter the commitment date, which is when your agency first committed capital funds towards the mode. And finally, you will then enter the start date, which is the first day of revenue service. Please note, do not enter an end date if the service is still in operation. You will only enter an end date if the service has been terminated. Please note that agencies cannot delete modes from the profile once they've been added. You may edit modes directly in this form by selecting the field you wish to update. You may add an end date if the service has ceased operations or update the commitment or start dates if needed. Lastly, we'll review the user roles for agency users in the NTD system. The user roles are as follows. CEO or CEO delegate if applicable, the NTD contact, editors, and viewers. CEOs and CEO delegates have the highest level of access and permissions in the system, including the ability to create reporter requests like waivers, waiver requests, or extension requests. CEOs have the ability to submit the report as well as view and edit reporting forms and issues. The CEO delegate role is optional for all agencies and it does require FTA approval. The NTD contacts have the same permissions as the CEO aside from creating reporter requests and submitting the original submission or the first draft of the report. Editors may only revise and save forms while viewers may only view the forms. You may disregard the safety roles like safety contact or safety editor as urban reduced reporters do not report safety data through the safety module. Now we'll dive into starting the report year. The first step in completing the annual report is completing the report year kickoff. This process officially launches the current report year. After your fiscal year ends, your agency's CEO and NTD contact will receive a task in the system to complete the kickoff. This process will generate the report package for the year after you confirm your agency's information. First, the CEO or NTD contact will select the task tab. You will then need to select a 2023 report year kickoff task to begin the process of generating the 22 report package or report year 2022 report package forms. Once you select a 2023 report year kickoff task, you will need to accept the task and then hit proceed. The first step in this process is confirming or editing your agency's users for the year. You can add users or edit existing contact information as needed. The next step is confirming or editing your agency's mode for the year, modes for the year. You could add new modes if you started a new service or end modes if a service has ceased operation in the past year. 
The next step is managing your 2022 Transit Asset Management Group Plan Sponsor if you are participating in a group, group uh, Transit Asset Management Plan. You will confirm your sponsor from the 2021 year here. If you are completing your own Transit Asset Management Plan, you can simply click Continue. If you need to remove the sponsor from last year or select a new one, please contact your analyst. Next, you will confirm your reporter type for 2022. If you were a small systems reporter last year, ensure that no is selected under change type as your reporter type will not be changing. If you accidentally revise your reporter type to the incorrect type, don't worry, your analyst can revert you back to the correct reporter type. You should select the same answer for your 2023 reporter type, then select submit to complete the report year kickoff. This will generate your 2022 report package forms. The system typically takes a couple of minutes to complete this function. So be sure to check your forms after allowing a little bit of time. Next, we'll take a look at annual form navigation. To access your, your 20, RY22 report package, first select home at the top of the page and then annual. Do not select the 2023 report package as this is the wrong reporting package for this year's NTD report. You will then select the RY 2022 report package link. Once the report package summary page opens, select annual forms in the top right hand corner. This will open a list of report package forms. You can select any form link to open whichever form you plan on working on. This is a list of the forms you will see in your report package. We will take a look at each one of these going forward. The first form in each report package is the B10 or the identification form. When completing the B10 form, the first step is to select your agency's organization type from the drop-down menu. Examples of available organization types include, but are not limited to, city, county, or local government unit or independent public agency, universities, or even area agency on agents. After you've selected your agency's organization type, you will report your demographic information. This includes service area square miles and service area population. The data points for service area should represent your agency's true service area for transit and not the data for your, spe your specified urbanized area. To complete your demographic information, you will report data related to your urbanized areas or UZAs. Your primary UZA will be pre-populated in the form. You can add a secondary urbanized area or more as applicable by clicking on the add UZA button. If your agency has any modes that will be filing separately or has service that's captured another NTD report, you report them in the modes filing separately section. If this does not apply to your agency, please leave this section blank. Please consult your analyst before adding any new modes filing separately on this form. And lastly, if your agency owns capital assets that are used in another NTD reporter service, you will be required to report the agency and the modes where these assets are used in the separate assets section of the B10. Again, if this does not apply to your agency, please leave this section blank. Next, we'll cover the B30 contractual relationship forms. The B30 form captures information about contractual relationships. These are relationships where transit service is provided to an agency or government unit from a public or private transportation provider based on a written contract. There are two types of contractual positions, the buyer and the seller. The buyer service will be the transit agency that pays another entity to perform the service. Please note, if the buyer of service only pays a portion of the cost to operate service, it should not be reported as a contract. The seller of service will be the entity that provides service on behalf of another agency. The seller may be public or a private entity. The NTD has specific criteria for service that may be reported as a contract. The criteria are as follows. There should be a written existing agreement that outlines the following. Number one, there's an obligation that the seller provides operations, 
for a specific monetary consideration. Number two, it specifies a contractual relationship for a certain time period in service. Number three, it obligates the seller to provide the buyer the operating statistics required by the NTD annual report. And number four, the authorized representatives of both the buyer and the seller must sign a written agreement. Please note, buyers must pay the full cost of service in order to report the service as a contract to the NTD. Also, the service must be branded under the transit agency buying the service. To add a B30 form to your report package, you will click on the Add Contractual Relationship button at the top of your report package summary dashboard. All B30s from previous years will be generated during your report year kickoff as part of your report package. Once you've selected Add Contractual Relationship, the first step is to select whether the contractual relationship with another agency who reports the, reports the NTD or if that agency is a private company. Then you'll select Continue. If your B30 is with another NTD reporter, you must select the, con the contracted agency from a list generated by the NTD database. You can also search for the provider in the search bar. At the top of the B30 is the contract summary. The first selection you must make is your contractual position. This indicates whether your agency is the buyer of service or seller of service. Once you have selected your position, you will report whether the contract was negotiated or competitively bid. This should refer to when the contract was awarded, even if the option years have been exercised. Then you will select the primary feature of the contract, or how does the buyer compensate the seller? There are two options here. One, the buyer pays the seller a negotiated fixed rate per unit of service, or the buyer reimburses the seller's net operating expense based on an approved budget. And you'll select one of these options from the drop down menu. Next, you'll indicate whether the service statistics will be reported in your NTD report or another NTD report. If you are reporting the service data in your own NTD report, select the In This Report option. If another NTD reporting agency will be capturing the service data provided in the contract, select In Another Report. And the next step, you will indicate whether the seller keeps the fares or the seller returns the fares collected to the buyer. The last selection for the contract summary is to indicate any public assets provided to the seller by the buyer, if applicable. This may be vehicles, maintenance facilities, or other public assets. If you select other, you will be required to provide a description of the public asset provided. The next section of the B30 form is where you'll add each mode provided um, as part of the contract. These modes do not carry over from year to year and must be added to your B30 report um, each and every year. Please note, you may only add active modes from your P20 form or modes listed as filing separately on your B10 form. You will click the add new mode and type of service button at the bottom left of the form to add modes. Then you'll select the appropriate mode and type of service from the drop-down menu and click edit on the right-hand column to open up the key financial and operating statistics field. We'll now take a look at the key financial and operations statistics, statistics section. First, you will report the number of vehicles operated in maximum service, or VOMS. This should represent the highest number of vehicles operated at any given point during the year, excluding special events or atypical service days. Then you'll indicate how many months the seller provided service during the year. Next, you'll report the amount of fare revenues generated by the service. You should report the total amount of fares collected regardless of whether the buyer or the seller retains the fares. Then you'll report the total payments to the contractor in the direct payment line. This should be the total number or the total amount paid directly from the buyer to the seller without netting out any capital leasing or other expenses. The next step will be, you will indicate the amount of capital leasing expenses for the contract. Capital leasing expenses or capital leasing costs are expenses that the seller charges the buyer for use of its capital assets, such as vehicles or maintenance facilities. 
If the buyer provides all the access or all the assets, this does not apply. Next, if you are the buyer of service, you will record any cost your agency incurs for overseeing the contract under the other operating expenses incurred by the buyer field. This should include general administration costs to oversee the contract and any other applicable expenses. Finally, you will report any lease and or rental expenses and the other reconciling items expense incurred by the buyer field. An example of this would be vehicle rentals. The next form we'll review is the A10 Stations and Maintenance Facilities form. On this form, you will begin by reporting data on your agency's passenger stations. You will report the number of ADA accessible and non-accessible stations, as well as the number of elevators and escalators in your stations. Passenger stations must be significant structures and separate right-of-ways in order to be reportable. Please note, bus stops or bus shelters do not count as passenger stations. If you have any questions regarding what constitutes a station or maintenance facility, please contact your analyst. Next, you'll report a count of your agency's maintenance facilities used to support revenue service. This will include any owned or leased maintenance facilities. You'll report the facilities by the ownership type, facility type, and capacity. If your agency uses one maintenance facility for multiple modes, you will need to prorate the facility based on the number of vehicles it serves. For example, if an agency operates at demand response mode and a bus mode that use the same maintenance facility, this facility will need to be prorated between the A10 forms for each mode. The example provided shows a garage that services 10 vehicles total four motor bus vehicles, and six demand response vehicles. Your A10 forms would look like this. The bus A10 form would reflect 0.4 or 40% of the facility, and the demand response A10 would reflect 0.6 or 60% of the facility. This is determined by taking the number of vehicles for each mode and dividing by the number of total vehicles in all modes. And with this, I'll turn the presentation over to Dan, who will take us to the finish line. Thank you, Matt. Can you see my screen? Sure can. Awesome. Okay. Now we will talk about the A15 facilities inventory form. The A15 form collects basic information on facilities that your agency uses to supply public transit service. On this form, you should report administrative and maintenance facilities for which your agency has capital responsibility. However, you should report all passenger and parking facilities that your agency uses in public transit service, regardless of who has capital responsibility for those facilities. Some common examples of facility types are administrative buildings, combined administrative administration and maintenance facility, and standard maintenance facilities. Please note that if your agency reports a maintenance facility that is owned on the A-10 form, we would generally expect that facility to appear on the A-15 form, as long as your agency's use for that facility is greater than incidental. A few common examples of facility types are administrative buildings, which are the offices that house executive management and supporting activities for transit operations, combined administrative and maintenance facilities, which are facilities that combine the functions of both an administrative and maintenance facility, and finally, maintenance facilities. These are facilities where routine and heavy maintenance on vehicles is performed. If you reported facilities in last year's NTD report, those facilities will automatically pre-populate in this year's form. This means that you will only need to add new facilities or update existing facility on an ads needed basis. To add a new facility to this form, select add new followed by add facility. This will allow you to begin entering the data for the facility. There are three sections for you to complete when adding a new facility. Facility information, condition assessment, and address. If you are unsure of how to complete any of these data entry fields, please refer to the NTD policy manual or contact your analyst. 
select the no data to report checkbox if your agency does not have any reportable facilities. The A30 revenue vehicle inventory form is where you report all revenue vehicle data categorized in vehicle fleets. Each year, you should review and update the A30 form by adding any new vehicles or retiring any vehicles that are no longer in service at your agency. The form will pre-populate all revenue vehicle fleets from the previous report year. If you need to add a new fleet, you will select the Add New Fleet button. First, you will report the basic information about the fleet. If there are multiple vehicles in a fleet, these vehicles should be identical across all specifications. You will select the vehicle type from the drop-down menu of options. Then you will report the number of total vehicles and active vehicles in the fleet. Active vehicles should include all vehicles that are available to provide revenue service, including spares. Next, you will select the ownership type. This will include options such as owned or leased and whether the vehicles are owned or leased by a public agency or private entity. Then you will select the funding type. This should represent the largest funding source for the vehicle fleet. There are several options for funding type, including FTA grant programs, other federal funds, and non-federal funds. If you do not have capital responsibility for the fleet, you should check the no capital re replacement responsibility box. If vehicles in a fleet can operate without any human input, you should check the automated or autonomous vehicles box. This selection will not apply to the majority of reporters. Once you have entered the basic information, you will report the vehicle information. This includes the fleet's model, length, seating and standing capacity, fuel type, manufacturer, and year manufacturer. Some vehicles may have multiple manufacturers. Agencies must report the final manufacturer and model. For example, for a cutaway vehicle, you should report the cutaway body manufacturer and model, since that is the final manufacturer of the vehicle. You should not report the manufacturer model of the vehicle's chassis. If you have questions about how to report these data points for your fleets, please contact your analyst for guidance. And as a note, if your agency reports a year rebuilt for a vehicle fleet, you are required to indicate the type of rebuild that was performed. In each vehicle fleet, you will see useful life benchmark as well as useful life remaining in the vehicle information section. Useful life benchmark is the expected life cycle or the acceptable period of use in service for an asset as determined by your agency or the default benchmark provided by FTA. Please note that this measure takes into account your unique operating environment, including your geographic location, the frequency of your service, and your climate. Because of this, useful life benchmark is not the same as useful life for FTA grant programs, which typically defines the minimum age at which equipment can be retired. Useful Life Benchmark will automatically populate a default value when you select the vehicle type. For example, if the vehicle type for this fleet is selected as bus, the standard Useful Life Benchmark for buses as defined by FTA is 14 years. Thus, a value of 14 will populate in this field. Agencies then have the option to report a value that is different from this default. Useful life remaining will automatically populate once you report the, uh, the year a fleet was manufactured. Please note that useful life remaining is not an editable field. This value is calculated based on the year manufactured and the useful life benchmark fields. Lastly, you will report the mileage information. This includes miles this year, which should reflect all mileage incurred by the fleet during the fiscal year, and average lifetime miles, which is the average total mileage per active vehicle in the fleet. If you need to edit an existing fleet, you will first click on the link of the fleet's revenue vehicle inventory, or RVI ID. This will open a dropdown where you will then be able to update any fields as necessary. For agencies that share fleets between modes, you can copy fleets from one A30 to another by selecting the Add Existing Fleet option. The system will populate all fleets that may be shared between modes. If a fleet is no longer in service and needs to be retired, you should not delete the fleet from the A34. 
what you should do is change your active vehicle's value to zero and then select yes for the is this fleet retired question that will pop up in the bottom right-hand corner of your fleet details. If a fleet is out for repairs and will be coming back into service, you should still update active vehicles to zero, but you should select no for the is this fleet retired question. Finally, Fleets should only be deleted from the A30 form if they were accidentally added to the report. If needed, you can delete a fleet by clicking on the red X next to the fleet entry. The next form is the Service Vehicle Inventory A35 form, which reflects an inventory of service vehicles that support your agency's transit service. Agencies are required to report service vehicle fleets for which they have capital responsibility. Service vehicles include cars used for administrative staff, transit police cars, tow trucks, service trucks, and other support vehicles. Because service vehicles must be roadworthy in order to be reported, agencies should not report small forklifts, golf carts, or any type of construction equipment that is not roadworthy. This form works in a similar manner as the A15 form. To create a fleet, select Add New. Please ensure that you report revenue vehicles on the A30 form and service vehicles on the A35 form. In other words, you should not report vehicles on the A35 form if the vehicles are used to transport passengers. If your agency does not have capital responsibility for any service vehicles, please select the do not, no data to report checkbox. Report the service fleet information for this vehicle fleet. Select the vehicle type from a drop-down menu, which consists three options, automobiles, truck and other rubber tired vehicles, and steel wheel vehicles. Automobiles are passenger cars up to and including station wagons in size. If you have a service vehicle that is a minivan or anything larger, report them as trucks or other rubber tired vehicles. Estimated cost is the most recent estimate of the full cost to replace the fleet. If you do not have a recent estimate, you may report the original cost of the fleet or its insured value. You must also report the year that corresponds to the dollar value you report. Save and validate the A35 form once you are finished. The next form we will discuss is the Transit Asset Management Performance Measure Targets A90 form. The A90 is where an agency or an agency's group plan sponsor reports the portion of assets that have met or exceeded the useful life benchmark of the asset. This will show your target reported last year, the current performance that is pulled from the current year asset forms, and a place for you to report your target for the next year. For the vehicles on the A30 and A35, the performance measure is determined by the useful life benchmark. For facilities on the A15, the performance measure is determined by the condition assessment. Some agencies report their targets directly to the NTD, and some are participants under a group plan sponsor who reports one A90 form on behalf of all of their participants. These are the categories that you will see in the A90 form. The sections are broken down into equipment, which represents service vehicles, Rolling stock, which represents revenue vehicles. Facilities, which represents your passenger stations and other administrative or maintenance facilities. And infrastructure, which doesn't apply to reduced reporters as it pertains to rail. The first section of the A90 form is rolling stock, which refers to the revenue vehicles you report on the A30 form. You should report performance targets for active revenue vehicles for which you have capital responsibility and you should select the NA boxes for any vehicle types that do not apply to your service. The second section is equipment, which refers to the service vehicles you report on the A35 form. This section reflects the three vehicle types represented in the A35 form, which are automobiles, trucks and other rubber tire vehicles, and steel wheeled vehicles. You should complete this section in the same way that you completed the rolling stock section. The third section, Facilities, contains your agency's targets for the facilities you reported in your A15 form. 
you should report the percentage of facilities that you expect will rate below a three on the term scale as of the next fiscal year. At the bottom of the form, you should upload your narrative report document, which is an annual requirement. Your narrative report should outline the targets your agency set in this A90 form, the progress towards those targets, and any changes within your transit systems operating environment. The narrative report document should be uploaded and submitted with your annual report. Next is the reduced reporting RR20 form, which contains the highest volume of data in the NTD report. This form will include financial, service, and safety data. There are several sections on the RR20 form, including fair revenues and directly generated funds, revenues occurred through a PT agreement, non-federal funds, federal government funds, service data, and finally, safety data. The first section is where you will report financial data. First, you will report the total annual expenses by mode and type of service. This should include all funds expended towards your public transit service. You will separate expenses by funds expended on operations and funds expended on capital. Please note, capital leasing expenses should not be included in either of these totals if you have a B30 form. In that case, the total funds expended at the top of the form will not match the sum of funds expended by mode and type of service, which you enter here. Next, you will report fair revenues by mode and type of service. Fair revenues should include all income received directly from passengers, including cash or prepaid tickets, reduced or subsidized fares, donations made on board the vehicle, and any organization fares such as agreements arranged by colleges or universities. With the updated USOA in effect since Report Year 2018, agencies are required to report fare revenues in two categories, passenger page fares and organization paid fares. Passenger paid fares consist of direct fares, including payments such as full adult fares or senior citizens. Organization paid fares include fares earned from organizations for providing transit service, such as universities, uh, fare, reduced fare reimbursements, or other special contract transit fares. You will then report the total of other directly generated funds in the next section. Some examples of other directly generated funds are advertising revenues, fundraisers, park and ride revenues, or interest on investments. You must provide a detailed description of the funds reported in this section. Agencies should also include donations and insurance recoveries in this field. Insurance recoveries should include any insurance payouts, dividends, or rebates, and funds that may be netted out towards future bills. The next section of the form is our PT agreement revenues or revenues accrued through a purchase transportation agreement. You should only report a value in this field if your purchase transportation agreement meets NTD criteria for a full cost contract. This field is for revenues accrued by the seller of transportation services. This will not include passenger fares generated by the service. You should only report a value in this field if you are the seller or operator of purchase transportation. If this field applies to your agency, you will indicate whether the revenues came from another entity reporting agency or a non-entity reporting agency. Next, you will report your non-federal funds. This includes local funds, state funds, and other funds. If you report funds under other, you will be required to, to provide a detailed description of the source of funding. The last portion of the financial data section is federal funds. You will first select the applicable federal funding sources on the left side of the form. Once you do so, fields will populate on the right side of the form for data entry. Once you have determined the appropriate sources, you will enter the data for each federal funding source. As a reminder, you will need to report funds expended on operations and funds expended on capital in separate columns. If you have received CARES, CURSA, or ARP funding, please note that each of these funds have their own specific line. Please do not report these under regular 5307 funds or extraordinary and special items. 
Please note, if you select an other option, such as other FTA funds, other US DOT funds, or other federal funds, you will require to provide a description of the original source program. Some examples of these other sources may be FHWA funds or Medicaid funds. The next section in the form is annual service data. When reporting miles and hours, you should only include those miles and hours in which your transit vehicles are operating in revenue service, which is when the vehicles are transporting passengers or have the capacity to transport passengers. Only passenger trips should reflect each time a passenger boards a vehicle and should include personal care attendants who ride fare free. Please note that while you report sponsored service only passenger trips for certain modes in a separate data entry field, the total only passenger trips should represent all ridership for the year, including regular and sponsored trips. In other words, you should not deduct sponsored UPT from your total UPT number. Vehicle revenue miles and hours should include the miles and hours when the vehicle is in revenue service, including miles and hours incurred during layover and recovery time. Revenue miles and hours should not include deadhead, operator training, school bus or charter services, or vehicle maintenance testing. Here, you will see a table that illustrates what is considered revenue service, both miles and hours, for a demand response program. For example, when the vehicle departs the dispatching point to pick up a passenger, this is not considered revenue miles or hours. This is deadhead. However, on the third row in the table, when the vehicle arrives at a pickup point and waits for the passenger, this waiting time would be considered vehicle revenue hours. This next table outlines examples of revenue service for a bus mode. When the bus is traveling on its route during scheduled revenue operation, this would be considered rev vehicle revenue hours and revenue miles, even if passengers do not board the vehicle. On the fourth row, there is an example of deadhead. Once the bus arrives at the end of the route and deadheads back to the storage lot to park, this is not considered revenue service. You may have referenced these tables for both demand response and bus in the policy manual starting on page 69. Only passenger trips should represent the total number of boardings on your agency's vehicles while providing public transit. Please remember that these are not linked trips. So every time a passenger boards a vehicle, it is considered one only passenger trip. The safety data section is the last section of the RR20 form. The thresholds for reporting reportable incidents, fatalities, and injuries are listed here. Regarding fatalities, please note that the fatality must occur within 30 days of the event and must result from a transit-related event. For example, if a passenger suffers a fatal heart attack while riding the transit vehicle, but there was no transit-related safety event, such as a collision, this would not be a reportable incident. Regarding injuries, the injured person must be transported away from the scene for immediate medical attention in order to be reportable. If you do not have any safety data to report for the year, please enter zeros into all three of these fields rather than leaving them blank. Now we will cover some common validation issues with service data. The first is reporting scheduled hours or available service hours instead of actual revenue hours. You should report actual vehicle revenue hours and not scheduled hours. A second common validation issue is ensuring that you are reporting your expenses by their original source of funding. A third common validation issue is reporting vehicle revenue miles based on an average route distance. Agencies should be tracking actual vehicle revenue miles, not calculating an estimate. Finally, another common issue relates to deadhead. Agencies should not include deadhead in an annual vehicle revenue miles or annual vehicle revenue hours. Deadhead includes the time and miles while leaving the garage to go to the first pickup point of revenue service, returning to the garage from the last point of revenue service, or any time the driver does not have a duty to carry passengers. If you have questions about what to include in your service totals, please contact your analyst for further guidance. 
The next form in the report package is the Federal Funding Allocation Statistics or FFA 10 form. As noted earlier in the presentation, agencies who submit their annual report in October will not have their FFA 10 forms generate in their annual package. The FFA 10 forms will become available as a task sometime in December. If you have more questions about this, please contact your analyst. Once it is time to fill out your FFA 10 forms, you will report the vehicle revenue miles, hours, ridership, and operating expenses broken down by each UZA you serve. You will complete one FFA 10 form for each mode. The UZAs will populate based on your agency's B10 form. If you provide service within one UZA or one non-UZA, you will report all of your service to that area. If you operate in more than one area, you will report the data statistics for that route to the UZA or non-UZA that is primarily served. Or you can allocate the data statistics proportionally to the UZAs and non-UZAs served. For further information on the serve rules and allocating their different UZAs, please refer to the entity serve rules in our policy manual. Here you will see an example of an FFA 10 form with one UZA. There is one column to enter all of, the, all of the data. Here is an example of an FFA 10 form with two UZAs. There will be two columns for you to allocate your data between the UZAs. You will see on the left side of the form, each data point that you will report, vehicle revenue hours or VRH, on the passenger trips, UPT, vehicle revenue miles, VRM, and operating expenses, OE. You will first select your UZA reporting method. There are three options, actual data, actual vehicle revenue miles, or other. For actual data, this means your agency tracks 100% of VRH, VRM, UPT, and operating expenses between all of the UZAs that you serve. Actual vehicle revenue miles means that your agency only tracks VRM operated in each UZA. The system will then automatically allocate the remaining data points, such as VRH, UBT, and operating expenses, based on the VRM data that you report. The last option, other, means your agency use another methodology to track data between UZAs, and you must provide a description of this method. If you select actual data, you'll need to manually enter the values for vehicle revenue hours on the passenger trips, vehicle revenue miles, and operating expenses into both UZA columns. If you select actual vehicle revenue miles, you may only report VRM to each UZA. The other data points will automatically out be allocated. You will report the amount of VRM in each UZA column. If you select other, Allocate your data accordingly and then provide a description of your methodology. The last form in the report package is the D10 CEO certification form. This form should be completed by your agency's CEO. First, you will need to confirm the accuracy of your NTD report. Here, you will confirm that your reported data in accordance with NTD policy and the uniform system of accounts. Now, you will review the criteria listed in options A through G and ensure that the data meets these requirements. You will select yes or no for each mode operated. Next is a section of the D10 that pertains to the IAS FD or Independent Auditor Statement for Financial Data. You will first indicate whether or not you have an existing IAS FD within the last 10 years. If you completed one last year or have one from the last 10 years, you will select yes to the first question and then proceed to the next section. If you do not have an existing IASFD, you will indicate whether or not your agency has a waiver for this audit or the current year. If you did not receive a waiver, the last question will appear and you can upload your newly completed IASFD document directly into the system. You will need to complete the date it was completed and who it was completed by. If you have not completed your audit, please select no to the first three questions on this screen and then enter the anticipated completion date in the explanation box. This allows you to explain why the audit has not been completed yet 
and when your agency expects to have it completed. Lastly, you will review the data collection method for your only passenger trips. If there are several methods, the most common being 100% count of only passenger trips, the other options are an alternative sampling method, the entity sampling method, APC data, or none of the li options listed, which you would, you would provide a description for. Please note, most reduced reporters do not sample for UPT. If you are unsure on what method to select, consult with your analyst for guidance. Once you have determined the method that your agency uses, you will select the choice from the drop-down menu. If using any automatic passenger counter or APC data for UPT for your modes, please check the used APC data checkbox, which is a new field, which was a new field last year. This is the last section of the D10 form. Now we will cover how to submit your agency's NT report once the forms are completed. Please note that completing the forms in your report package or completing the D10 form does not submit your report. Once the report is finalized, navigate to the report package summary page and select related actions. Please note that only the CEO or CEO delegate may submit the original submission, which is the first submission of the report. The entity contact may submit any subsequent reports during the revision process. Once related actions is open, select submit annual report package. If the report is complete and there are no outstanding issues with the data, you will be able to confirm the report package submission by clicking continue. Finally, to complete the submission process, you will click submit. Once the report is submitted, you will receive a notification that says action completed successfully. You can confirm that the package was submitted if the package is listed as in review rather than in working data on the report package summary page. Lastly, we will cover the validation process and what happens with your report after you submit the original submission. Your assigned entity analyst will validate your completed report for any deviations from the reporting requirements, missing data, or data irregularities. This includes whether the data fluctuated significantly from the prior report year, if any forms do not contain all the necessary information, or if any data elements were reported to the incorrect field. Prior to submitting the report, agencies may take advantage of their resources to reduce the time dedicated to report validation. This includes contacting your analysts prior to submission so that they may review your data in advance. You may also refer to report checklists included in your welcome packet, which contain common validation errors and other items to look out for before submitting. It is typical for a report to go through a few revision cycles before being closed out. Your analysts will almost always return your original submission for data revisions or clarifications. Once the report is ready to be sent to FTA for approval, it will either be seen as a clean closeout, which means there were no issues with the report, or it will be a closeout with issues, which means there were some outstanding issues that could not be resolved prior to the report closeout. The issues are cited in your closeout letter, and your agency will be expected to resolve them by the following report year. Looking ahead to the 2022 report year, you can expect a welcome email from your analyst as your due date approaches. This email will include a packet containing helpful hints, as well as a reporter checklist. Your analyst will also provide guidance in completing, submitting, and validating the report until it is closed out. Please do not hesitate to reach out with questions. Thank you very much for tuning in. Again, here's the contact information for the help desk line. We're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to post them in the chat over the next couple of minutes. Um, and then Solyndria will take us out. Thank you so much, Dan. And thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. Special thank you again to Matt and Dan for the very informative presentation. And just a reminder that you will be receiving an invitation to fill out an evaluation for this event. NTI always appreciates your feedback. Thank you once again and everyone be safe.